Generic greetings and welcome back to Airships Conquer the Skies once again. Today's beverage is... Ah, very lovely, that's a nice cup of tea. So, this is a sort of follow-up from my previous series that didn't entirely go to plan because basically we lost it and it was due to a couple of reasons. Firstly, the insurmounting odds. We were always up against it because we were versing one huge empire when we only had a very small amount and also my own ineptitude, which is obviously something that we're always trying to fight and often lose against. But the thing is... I didn't realise how much of a problem things were until after the fact and I've re-examined things. Let's just go over to the design and fight as well as combat and we're going to go to building and we're going to add the white lookout which is the thing that we were most... Uh most against, especially during the latter part of the series, and this is a defensive structure, and as you can see, it is fairly tall, but also fairly well armoured. It's got the uh, stone wall here. Uh, in terms of armament, it's quite good as well. Forward facing, we've got four rifles, five cannons. At the top, we've got two flak. At the rear, we have three cannons and two rifles, so that's quite good, and also some lightning as well. Uh, if we go back over to add building, we can also see that it has uh, one bridge, two bridge, uh, three bridge, no, uh, two bridges, uh, two sick bays, a couple of repair bays, two fire points, a lot of guard barracks, and pretty much the kitchen sink. And the main problem is that it costs 1,852 generic units of currency, which is really, really, really cost effective. Like, for what you're getting, that's insane. And when we put that against something like, if we go to airship, and load up, say, well, the generic carrier, we could have that, but we know that doesn't work. If we go for, say, something like the Ant version 1, which is just an Imperial cannon on the slimmest body we can get it on there. And it, 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 yeah, it's, it's 1,500. So there's very little in between them. So you could get, you could get, <laughs> um... Well, let's just see how I can balance it out. Let's go to building and we'll say white lookout. We'll put another one in there. So that's about th uh, 3.7. Go to airships and the ant again. So we put another one in there. That's 3,000. That would be 4,000. Yeah, so we can't even get... It's pretty much a one-to-one, -one, right? It's so close that there's pretty much nothing in it. And guess what? If I press start here, there's going to be not much in that as well, actually. The only thing I can probably do is move that right far back, click start, and then actually put it on aim fire rather than the rapid I was putting it on. And um, to be fair, we immediately looked out because the first shot managed to hit right at the top there and took a made a secondary explosion to blow the top off, which uh, never really happened in the series, but hey-ho. So as you can see, we're bombarding this. But the fact is, I've got one shot every 10 seconds. They've got a couple of, well, they've got like five or six shots every however. And I'm, you know, I missed that one. That's, um, that's not good. And I go over to here. As you can see, I'm um, not taking many hits, but eventually I will, I will actually take one that will really start to hurt. We have got uh, steel armor there, which is always useful. But here's the Imperial Cannon firing again. So three to one bang, maybe. There it goes. And the shot's going to either hit low or miss completely miss again. So I have got it on aimed fire, it's just, it's not working out. Um, I don't know if I'm in good range, but let me move it a little bit further forward. But the thing I'm trying to show you is that basically what we're up against is, is really the resource efficiency of this building. And obviously we've just, we've just whacked something there and taken a big chunk out of it. Um, but it's constantly peppering my ship. Now, we might look out, we might win this, we might not. Obviously, you can see there's damage to the Imperial Cannon there. We've got um, someone just being hit in the crow's nest and went down probably to uh, to exchange out with someone else. There's a hole in the side there. There's another shot there. and Oh, that's bad. Um, that was actually just lightning, I believe, that hit my ship. And, yeah, I've lost the Imperial Cannon. Oh, and then the other shot came in and taken it out anyway. So, there you go. Um, so, I've lost that. So, how the hell am I supposed to beat that? Well, going back to the drawing board... Probably the only way to beat that is, well, how would you beat really huge defensive structures in the first place, historically? Well, A, the first option is to just not face them and go around them, uh, you know, <laughs> a la Maginot line. Uh, we, we, we can't do that in this case, we have to smash through it. So, we're not going to just use, uh, well, we could if we really wanted to, have a really big tank and roll forward and bombard it that way. That would probably work because they're quite resource efficient and you don't have to make them float. That would work, but only on areas where we can actually get a vehicle in there. So we can't attack ports, we can't do that sort of thing. We need to, we need to have a flying vessel. Um, so the only way to do that, I think, is to attack from the back, which means a very, very fast ship to go around there, or attack it from the top, in which case the only real options are bombers. So we did try to make a bomber. 
which is my original thinking when we made the Lank version 3, and it was terrible in every way. It was too slow, it was too over-engineered, and I thought it would work, but did not. I mean, if we go to armor, you can see it's got reinforced wooden armor. However, what would happen, these bits would fall off, it would fall out of the sky, it just didn't work, right? You know, the, the, you could analyze it all you want, but it didn't work. I mean, if when we take these off here, look, here we go. It's got a 89 meter service ceiling. That is far too much. I mean, it's it's stupidly inefficient for for the size of vessel. Um, now, we could pare it down, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is go straight back to the drawing board and go to basics. We want a vessel that has bomb bays, that can float, and has got pretty much nothing else. We're probably not even going to put a fire point in it. We'll put some coal, we'll put some ammo, and that'll be it. This is over ammoed, by the way, because the original idea was to... Um, was to stay right ab right above the vessel and being able to hit it hard and uh, stay there, but yeah, it didn't. It just fell out the sky. So we'll uh, we'll leave that. We'll just we'll, we'll restart the design. Now we have done one previously. We have done one previously, and it was called the um, the Zeppington Mark II technically because that was the best one, and it was very very good. But it also had a bit of a problem that when it got hit, it would often fall out the sky very very quickly because it had two huge suspendium tanks, and once one of them was removed, it would go. Uh -oh, Oh, and then half its service uh, ceiling, which was, I believe, about 300 meters, so it was already well overdone. Anyway, so what we're going to do is go to Bombay. I'm going to put this in. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're going to have 10 Bombays in this one. But what we'll probably do, actually, now that I think of it, is split it up into, into multiple sections. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. Nine. Actually, that'll probably do. Nine will probably be all right. I've just realized, actually, that it's got access at the bottom. Can you see them uh, little green lines on the left and right and then down on the down bits? Those are action. That, that's access, I believe, to, to go in and out. Well, that's a problem because you can't put anything underneath it. Hey ho. So, these are going to be, this is going to be our, our, um, our vessel. And what we'll do is we're going to make it, like I say, as cheap as possible. We're not going to be using anything that would be classed as... Um, actually, what we'll do is put those in there. Um, that's really, really close to ammo detonation, so let's just not do that. Um, yeah, what we'll have it as is like a, a fairly efficient vessel. So, bombers, ammo, it stays afloat, it goes forward and backwards, done. We're going to have no... Uh, guard barracks, we're going to have nothing to put a fire out, all that sort of thing, because I believe that the the Zeppington did have that. So we want as many, as much bang for our buck as we can possibly have. The problem we have now, I've already elongated the sections by putting these in, so it might be best on putting them in the corner. Now, the problem with that is, I'm well, I'm, I'm obviously going to shrink this down, which is useful, um, but we're also not getting really good access to, to the... Uh, to the center. Uh, one, let's have a quick look. So we've got how many bombers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is that ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, I think. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten. Okay, that's fine. So put them there and like that. And we'll store either end. Is that enough? Maybe. Maybe not. Currently only 358, which is always good. I'm going to put that one there and that one there. Um, Actually, do we need that? Do we need that? How much do they use? They use reload time 5 seconds. And that one uses... Requires one supply. Okay. It's not bad. Uh, and we'll store. Hang on. 100. Okay. Two of those will be probably sufficient for what we're trying to accomplish here. So, we need to keep this thing afloat. So we'll probably have fire. Do I need this as long as it is? Yes, we do. We do. Because we want to be quite up high and that means all these will be in arc. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So, suspendium chamber will go there and there. Next to it will be coal store there and there. Um... Okay, not bad. Armour, just to clarify, will be a wooden armour. So we need to stay afloat. 300, uh, 431 metres service ceiling. Wow, that's quite a bit, in it. <laughs> um, Didn't realise it was going to be that much. Probably get rid of that then. Having that. And then... 
in terms of propulsion. That's insane. It's very light, obviously. Um, we will have sails. Um, sails there and there, and there and there. What's the speed of this thing? Speed, 29. Because it's so light. It's so light. Okay, I can handle that. Right, next thing. We need to have some... What do we need? Don't need structural. Don't need fire doors. None of that. Do I want to put a fire point in this? A fire point would give it a bit more survivability if it is hit with something. Mm. Let's see. Let's see what it gets. Fire point. Oh, takes, it takes 40 meters off the service ceiling. That's for sure. So we're not going to bother. We're not going to bother. Uh, maintenance is... Sorry, supply is uh, z 0 of 3, so we need some supply hatches. Let's just go over to um, Command and Crew Quarters. So it requires air sailors. Rec well, recommended crew is 54. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> Didn't realize it was that much, actually. Let's. Yeah, let's put them in like that. If I. Keep on over a hundred meters, uh, over two hundred meters. I'll be happy. So there's that bridge. Will go there. Um, we've got a very big hole here. Yeah. Targeting computer. No, we can't. Yes. I. By the way, I should also clarify that what I haven't done is used things in the design that you cannot get natively. All right. So sing things that you. Um, do not have access to from the get-go, as in telescopes, uh, things like that, because I just didn't want to do it. Um, one, two, three. So how many have we got here? So uh, recommended crew is 57, actual air sailors is 69. Let's get rid of that one. And that, Oh, that's exactly what we need. Okay, so that's fine. I'd rather undercrew it than overcrew it. We will have a cockpit up the top. Sorry, not a cockpit. A crow's nest up the top there because we can. And we will have... Actually, you know what? Oh, it'd be really cool if we had that there. Like that. <laughs> I like that. That looks much better. Yeah. Okay. It also massively overcrews it. No, not really. Recommend crew 58 and we got 63. That's okay. That's not overcrewed, I don't think. Um, nice to have a telescope there. It's not going to happen. But what we will put on is... Uh, what do we need? A uh, supply of 20. So how much does... How much does this give? Uh, where are we at? I'm totally missing it. Alpine resources. Reinforced cargo door. No. Steel cargo door. No. Wooden cargo door. Supply... Oh, 40 supply. So we can probably use hatches, which is supply 8. There we go. And that is <laughs> the vessel. 1,404. So it's about 400 and change off the thing we're going to be specifically going for. And in terms of decoration, does it cost to put wooden nameplates on it? No. So, let's try this. What shall we call it? Hmm. Well, we've had the Zeppington. Hmm. I'm trying to. Th this it reminds me of something. It actually reminds me of a bit of like a submarine type thing. Like, um, what was Nemo's ship called? Yeah. Bit weird, that one. I'm just going to call it the Bomber. Actually, more like the... Yeah, we'll just call it the Bomber. Because, quite frankly, it's not a, ze it's not a Zeppelin. We haven't got the Suspendium tanks. Save the design, save it as version one, and as always, let's uh, let's see if we can let's see if we can iron out the kinks. So, day, add building, white lookout. There we go. 
straight away. We're going to say add airship and it's the bomber version one. The service ceiling is only there. That's the top of the service ceiling, but that's that's high enough. It would be nice if it was higher. Uh, the Zeppington version two, uh, just for comparison, it's in Legacy, is a little bit more expensive. It's got less bombs. It's probably faster though. Speed 16 at 332 meters a sec. Uh, so hang on, let me just check this. Service ceiling 332, speed 16. Two three seven twenty four. So this is faster somehow because it's lighter. It's also a hundred generic units of currency cheaper. It doesn't have the high service ceiling, but also it's a bit of a it's a bit of a falsehood anyway. Because if you look at the Zeppington, it's got two of those huge suspendium chambers which always break. So yeah, hang on. Hmm. Okay. Right, let's see if this works. I don't know if we'll actually run out of coal, to be honest with you. We might run out of coal. Let's start this immediately. We'll move it to there. So we're getting shot at. There goes the bombs, though. That's good. Put on aimed fire this time. Oh, we've actually overshot it as well. Outside view, you can see we are taking hits. Taking a lot of hits. Want to move back over there. Uh -huh. We've got almost all the bombs in. What we'll do is move it up, actually. We should probably move it up. Like that. And getting all of the bombs in arc is probably difficult. Oh, my good grief. Yeah, we need fire points. Yep. Yeah, as you can see, the fire is spreading through the whole of the ship. That's a problem. But that's good. Look at that. It's really giving a hammering. Although, eventually, this is going to... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's going to split in half. Right. Eventually, we're going to see the bomber crash down and land on top of this thing. <laughs> well, there's the tail. Where's the other bit? It's still there. It's running out of coal. Yeah. Um. Hasn't burnt through either. It is genuinely just run out of coal. But look at that. Look at the damage it's caused. Okay. Right. That was a good test. Airship editor. Open design. We'll open the bomber. So, what did we learn? A, it ain't got any water, so we need to do that. Which we knew, we knew that that was going to be a possible issue. I even said that, mm, maybe this isn't a good idea. Also, ain't got enough coal. Okay. Okay. So... How can I fix the problem? Fix the problem by... I don't know about ammo either, but hey-ho. Um, fix the problem by... Moving that and that. Putting coal on the other side. Okay. There we are. Um, so... That's double the coal storage, which is good. Hasn't solved the water problem out, though. Do we need to be as quick as we have it with this sail? That's the question. Do we need that sail there? I sort of quite like it. I do quite like it there. Um, <laughs> it's even quicker now. Um, it's actually not quicker because, because it's so heavy, you know, a, a, a lot, it's a lot heavier with a fire point. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. We don't need that speed that we're giving it there. Could arguably that would be quick enough. Yeah, arguably it would be quick enough, I think, with that one. Um, recommended crew 56, actual crew 54. Let's just, um, probably give it a little bit extra. Extra help in hand there. Yeah. Um, I like I like the way that looked there, though. It's a shame. Not having that there. I think it looked quite good. Um, always outside view. Yep. 
Yeah. Doesn't really look as good in there, actually. No, it doesn't really look as good because of uh, where it's been placed. Hmm. So we could even cheapen it out. I mean, 17 is probably quick enough. We're not, like, doing stupid manoeuvres in it, are we? And, you know, more cheap, more better might be the might be the call. Um, the question is, do we have access? So if we go for pathing, pathing goes straight down there. If we go for water, water's got... Yeah, that's the problem. We don't get, we don't have access to here. So having water is all the way around. One, two, three, four, five. Bang. Okay. So we're gonna widen it up by one. It's a lot of work. This. One, two, three, four, five. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Sort of a lot of work. Not a massive amount of work. Oh, there's also fire extinguisher, but you also need the bonus fire extinguishers, so I'm not taking that. Right, so basic corridor. There we go. Still not great access here, but at least there's some access. Um, and in terms of ammo... Oh yeah, sorry, pathing. There's good pathing there. Another bridge there. Sorry, another... Um... Actually, that might not be a terrible idea. Do I want a bridge in... Could have a rifle there <laughs> on the front just to plink away. Does that make it a lot more expensive? Not really, but it doesn't give access down that way, which is the whole point. Um, we might put in... Let's go to... Let's go to Command and Crew and Cockpit. Ah, that doesn't have access there as well, but it does have access there. If I do that, we're putting another bridge in. So it means we have um, a bit extra command if the other one blows up. And it sort of fits in with, you know, having a one at the front there, you know, like <laughs> like, a, like a bomb aimer, essentially. So it's enough crew. Recommended crew uh, 53. We've got 54. Cheap enough. Uh, service sailing good. Speed slow, but we'll try that one out. Let's just save the design. Let's save that design as V2. Save. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Bump. Okay, let's go to the combat again. And we'll say day. Add building. White locale. Put it there. Add a airship. And we'll go for the bomb V2. And we'll put it there. Now, obviously, this might start at the back here. So, actually, let's do a bit of a... Let's do a proper test. Because sometimes there's a bit of a gap. So, we'll start that off. Immediately pause it. I will order it to go as high as it can, right above them there, and there we are. <clears throat> so obviously I'm going to get shot off the flak, but I am missing most of the cannons, which is good. So we are taking hits, which we knew that was going to be the case. Uh, immediately though, I can put this on aim fire. There goes the first volley, there's the uh, the first stick, and uh, bang, there it goes, and immediately taking out a big chunk of stuff at the top. We are taking fairly decent amount of hits in the centre there, that's quite worrying, but we are also causing it back and obviously they're hitting near the suspendium one of the suspendium uh, one of the suspendium chambers but we have three of them so this is the advantage we have with over the Zeppington. The Zeppington relied on the two big Zeppelin uh, suspendium tanks, and when those go, it drops right out of the sky and actually the the acceleration of that um, is hard to when it's coming down, it takes a while to uh, arrest that. And, oh, there we go. We've lost the suspendium tank, so we're going to come down there. In fact, we're almost split in two. That's bad. But we have now taken out, though, all of their top guns. So we're actually only getting hit off rifles, I think, now. So if we can just put that fire out, which would be most good. Looks like we are putting the fire out from there. That centralised would be better. So we might have another redesign. We might have a version 3 at some point. But look at that. That's carnage. That's absolute carnage, considering this thing is 400 credits less than that. And, oh dear, that's another suspendium chamber that's came out, and we're going to split the ship in two if we hit that thing. Oh, just a little tap there, a little tap. Right, let's go back up. Let's go back up. Come on. Raise the vessel up. There we go. We've put the fire out now. No, it's still burning. Right, we haven't got... Okay, we're, we, are, we are burning all on the uh, front there, but we have won the fight. I don't know why it's burning so much. We mustn't have decent access to the front. 
Oh, there we go. This is a Spendium Chamber broken again. And victory. Luckily. Luckily. All right. Okay. So, that was another decent, uh, another successful, another successful go at that. Yeah, water, not really good there. We need to move this. We need to shift it somewhere. Um, needs to be further down. Needs to be like here, essentially. But the only way to do that would be to move that to there. Put that in there. Get rid of that. We're just we're, okay. We're just thinking aloud here for a second. Yeah, we don't have the uh, we don't have the extra bit for the for the coal star. So we'd have to lengthen it again to get the coal star in if we really wanted it. That would take a bit of a redesign, that one. Which, quite frankly, um, I don't really want to touch at this point. That being in the centre would be decent, definitely. But we'd have to widen it up by one. Probably instead of using the three by twos, we'll just have two small coal stars because I think that would do us. I think that would be fine. But it means lengthening it up once more, um, which again is what that's doing is making more length between these bomb bays, and you want them as co as close as possible because that means that you can then. Well, basically get the bombs in, because otherwise, if it's too long, then the, the end ones can't reach, so you're always losing some out there, which is something we definitely don't want. And the closer you are further down, the worse it becomes. But that, I think, is a decent version too. I am happy with that. I'm happy with the overall look of that one. And, to be honest, I think that if we had that in the campaign... We would have fared better. I'm I'm not going to suggest at all that we would have won the campaign. But if we had this, in terms of, you know, cost per mile, much better than the other stuff. This, 1,400. Open design. Uh, that's more expensive. <laughs> so, obviously, this for versing certain vessels is really good. This for versing more of them, especially static structures, better. It does have weaknesses, don't get me wrong. Doesn't like to take a hit. Obviously, you saw that the uh, armor there, not entirely effective, only against two flak. If they have multiple flak, it's going to take this thing out very quickly. If they have aircraft, we can't stop them. If they have um, if they have anything that goes high level, we're screwed. If we get boarded, we're screwed. There's many, many caveats to this being um, classed as useful. But yeah, overall, happy with what it does. As a, as a high level bomber, it seemed to work. Under the only two tests that we uh, performed on it. So, obviously, very limited sample set. We'd need to run it in a campaign and see what it is like. But, basically, I'm happy with it so far. From the performance was much better than most of the stuff we've designed recently. So, yeah, overall happy. Either way, that's been a little bit of Airships Conquer the Skies once again. Hopefully, I've... Um, clawed back a little bit of design dignity there by actually making something that seems to be quite useful against a specific enemy, admittedly, and like, say, a small sample set and all that. We don't know exactly what it's like in uh, the heat of battle, but uh, at least it seems to work, so that's all right. As always, if you have any uh, any suggestions for designs or changes and things like that, then by all means, let me know. Going to get back to airships at some point, but... Um and give them a little bit of a break until that happens. But uh, yeah, we'll see how things go. As always, hope you have enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and generic partings. <laughs>